Urban Climate Change Resilience Trust Fund, Angel Tax, Central Groundwater Authority, and with respect to editorial topic is Equivalence of Farm Loan Waiver and Corporate NPA. The first one, the Urban Climate Change Resilience Trust Fund. What is the meaning of a resilience? A resilience is nothing but it focuses on ensuring the safety of people and community, thereby enable the people to, fo to face the future problems. So it will focus mainly on the vulnerable sections of the society who are highly vulnerable to the climate change stress. So this Urban Climate Change Resilient Trust Fund has been created by this ADB, this Asia Development Bank to support this dream of this strategy of 2020. It has been established in 2013. This Urban Climate Resilient Fund who are eligible for this trust fund is India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, Nepal, Myanmar, Indonesia, Philippines and Vietnam. These countries are eligible to ut utilize this trust fund to face the people to handle the climate change stress because these Asia people are more vulnerable to the climate change and who are the fund contributors to this trust fund are this Rockefeller Foundation, Switzerland, UK and USA are the chief fund producer for this contributor to this trust fund and with respect to the next topic is this angel tax. This angel tax is nothing but it is for the startups to start up their company they will have this idea and the skill to build a develop to end uh, entrepreneurship but they don't have the sufficient capital to develop a business so they go for the affluent investors who are called as the angel investor so the tax that put on this angel investor there are only 30 percentage of a amount of tax will be put on this angel investor that tax is called angel tax based on the two conditions this angel tax will be applied the first one is if the amount of a uh, few only few stakeholders has been involved in the startup then that is called as a closely held company the angel tax will be put on this closely held company that is for the startups only very few affluent individuals are investing their money and second condition is if the premium share value for the affluent individuals has been higher than the fair market value then based on these two condition this angel tax will be applied so what is the recent issue with respect to this angel taxes this tax has been established, has been introduced by the Indian government in 2012. So the issue with respect to this angel tax is, the first one is, most of the affluent individuals are investing their money through this unlisted companies. So most of the black money has been money laundered through this unlisted companies, through this angel investors. So the government wanted to cut down this angel investors to converting that black money into white money through this investing in the startups. And second issue is the tax officials are putting the tax based on the net asset value of the startup. While the startups are saying that the asset value is not the right criteria to put the tax. They said that idea value is the first thing that is the base principle of this startup. So the startups are asking the government to put the tax based on the idea value. That is the potential of the idea of the company so that it can develop in the future profit. So this Taxation between this net value as well as this idea value is the second controversy with respect to this angel tax. And this tax has been introduced in this through this investment income tax 2012 to curb the politicians to utilize their bribing money to invest in this angel as in angel investors in the startups. So apart from that, the, what is the recent news with respect to this angel taxes? Recently, the startups has asked the government to reduce the taxations or to simplify the procedures to get the tax exemptions from this angel tax. So this tax exemptions they have recently the government has said that it is instead of going to the interministerial board and so many processes it has said that through this that is a department of industrial policy and promotion and through this this central board of direct taxes they can get this tax exemption for this angel tax. And what are the challenges with respect to this angel taxes? First one is the capital up to this 10 crore only can get this angel tax exemptions. So the capital intensive startups cannot get benefited from this angel tax exemptions. And second thing is it will benefit only the future investors. So the past investors will not get the any tax exemptions. So it is only benefit the future investors. And third important thing is it is putting obstacle to this startup India and stand up India program because these programs are focusing on more and more developing the entrepreneurship. While this angel tax is putting a curbing on this entrepreneurship of startups. So these are the challenges with respect to this angel tax. And third topic is the Central Groundwater Authority. This water is the important major topic with respect to our UPSC mains. And this water is the state subjects. 
With respect to this, the previous of what are the declarations that has been put the water is, the most important declaration is Stockholm Declaration of 1972. Based on that declaration only, we have enacted this Water Act of 1974. So, recent news with respect to this Central Groundwater Authority is, our government has set up 31st March as a deadline for the, all the industries which are utilizing the water for their processes has to get no objection certificate from this Central Groundwater Authority. And with respect to the new things that has been introduced as the guidelines by the Central Groundwater Authority is, first one they have introduced this water conservation fee. So depending on the variability of how much the water they are utilizing, what is the intensity of the water they are utilizing and how they are polluting the environment, based on that this water conservation fee will be put on each and every industries. And second thing is this guidelines given by the Central Groundwater Authority is to encourage to use their recycled and retreated sewage water by the industries. So that will give as an incentive for this industries if they properly utilize this re -sewage, uh, recycled sewage water. And third important thing is they have said this mandatory water audit utilizing this digital water level recorder. So mandatory water audit is a highly important thing that our industries has to follow. And last important thing is this Mikirsha committee has been appointed that has analyzed how to restructure this Central Water Commission as well as Central Groundwater Authority. Because in our country, we have separated this water utilization into two categories. One is surface water and another one is groundwater. Even though both are an integrated one, we have separated into two things. And there was lack of coordination between these two bodies. So this Central Water Commission will look after this surface groundwater and this Central Groundwater Authority will look after this groundwater. So the cleavage between the surface water and the groundwater makes the exploitation of a groundwater at a large level. So this Mikisha committee has recommended to create a national water commission that has been put out the united this both the central water commission as well as the central groundwater authority. And what are the future challenges that India has to face to with respect to this water is the recent the report has said that there was a severe decline in this per capita water availability in India that has reduced from 2,209 meters cube in 1991 to 1,545 meter cube in 2011. That shows that severe decline in this per capita water availability. That shows how Indian people are vulnerable to this water challenges. And second thing is we have many programs like Namami Gange program and river rejuvenation program. But the budget allocation was year by year it is increasing. But the, what is the output that coming is it is not at, up to the mark level. So we have to judicially utilize this budget allocation for this river Ganga uh, river rejuvenation and many other important major rivers rejuvenation and apart from this the, this kind of water quality is based on this quality based approach rather than the quality based approach. So the schemes are based on this quality based one. So the output has to be at least time bound manner then only it can easily measure how the quality of the water has been improved. So we have to stick to this time bound manner to produce a quality output and apart from that we need to have enact a river basin act because the water base has to be based on this river basin. The drainage basin has to be, the watershed basin has to be the ultimate groundwater level to protect it. So we have to create a river basin act to protect our river basin. And apart from that, we have to create a real time basis of national water information system. Because how much water level we are utilizing, how much this groundwater level are depleting, we need to have a real time basis of a national water information system. Because all the data are outdated one, it takes almost a decade to have a what is the current scenario. So we need to have a real time basis of national water level inter information system using the software like GIS that is geographical information system and remote sensing data. So by utilizing properly this GIS and remote sensing, we can develop a decision making of national water information system. And apart from that, we need to have an act, a dam safety act because the recent issue of Kerala flood shows how much we are lagging in the dam safety. So we have along with this World Bank, we have this dam rehabilitation and improvement project. We need to extend this project to each and every dams, even the major dams and the minor dams so that the safety of the people will be at most priority. And apart from this, we need to establish a National Bureau of Water Use Efficiency because the water use efficiency is one of the ultimate criteria that India is lagging because we have plenty of water, but how we are utilizing is, is the ultimate need. So we need to create a National Bureau of Water Use Efficiency. So it will handle how each and every industries are properly utilizing the water resources. And apart from this, the major drawback with respect to India is we have lack of this domain specialist in this Central Groundwater Board. Because most of the Central Groundwater Board will have more civil engineers rather than hydrology engineers. 
so we are lacking more and more domain specialists so we need to create more and more education courses for this handling this dam safety river basin and this hydrology specialist so that they only can foresee how the future water scarcity will be going to how we have to handle this because rather than having a generalist of a civil engineers we need to have more and more hydrologist engineers so that they will handle this future problems of indian people who are going to face this water and the last main topic with respect to mains is this equivalence of farm loan waiver and corporate npa the recent news with respect to this is a recent farmer has been tried to escape from india to who cannot pay this his loan of 5 lakh rupees so that put out that whether so many npas are created by corporate countries or leaving a lakhs of crores so a 5 lakh rupee farmer has to try to escape from the country and he has been put on by the police so what is, is this is this farm loan waiving and this corporate and pa or both are equal how they have differences and how they have the similarities we will see it the first one is what is this farm loan waiver the farm loan waiver is, is nothing but it's a sector specific one that is it is focusing particularly on the agriculture sector and it is putting off this loan mandated by the government with utilizing this national treasury to compensate the loans that has been given by the banks to the farmers so that is this farm loan waiver while this corporate npa is nothing but it is a part of a business failure so this will trigger this bankruptcy process and this bankruptcy process while in this farm loan waiver we will have the government has the high liability while this in this corporate npa the government don't have direct liability but if there was a huge scale of a bankruptcy process has happened or if more and more psbs that is public sector banks has involved in this corporate npas then the indirect liability of the government will be included in it, into it so when the government liability started to include into this corporate npa then this farm loan waiver and corporate npa is nothing but is both are contaminating this national treasury of our government so this bankruptcy process is nothing but it is a cleansing this bank balance sheet but it is really cleansing the bank balance sheets or it is a depleting this national treasury that is the biggest question mark in in front of us so because this farm loan waiver and this corporate npa both are this clashes between whether we are focusing on manufacturing or service sector or we are focusing on the primary sector because this farm loan waiving are mostly put on by this government during this election period as a vote bank politics while this corporate npa are happening year the round and this happening on repeatedly again and again so what is this this relevance between these two or whether this both are the same one and the same the first thing is this effective we have to effectively function this bankruptcy law because if we put down this bankruptcy law properly then it will generate new cycles of a credit because by liquidating the business failed company the resources can be utilized for other sectors so that the one wastage of resources can be utilized by other sectors so we need to have proper functioning of this bankruptcy law while with respect to this farm loan waiving we need to have this farm loan waiving will make a impediment in this credit flow because if a government started to waive this law farm loan then the more and more farmers will that usually the big farmers will started to gain more and more loans from the banks and they will wait for the election period and when the election period come they will the government will announce a farm loan then they are going to put off that uh, farm loans so this is nothing but it is not encouraging the banks to give more credit to the farmers rather than it is discouraging the uh, bank to cr give credits to the farmers so this farm loan waiving is nothing but it is a uh, impediment in the flow of credit while this bankruptcy loss by liquidating the companies it will make the reassure that the recovery amount will be utilized for other property for proper usage of business and third important thing is when this equivalence that is this farm loan waiving and this bankruptcy law is both are one and the same that is the government will have liability both in this bankruptcy uh, npa as well as in this farm loan waiving is when the state indirectly bear the burden of corporate np that is the government started to infuse this fund into this bank a bank through this bank recapitalization so that the government is taking the responsibility of the bank flow so that condition when arises then this corporate npa started to have more and more crushing on this consolidated fund of india then arises this equivalence between this farm loan waiving as well as this corporate npas and this bank started to lend to the same sector again and again like power sector infrastructure sector coal sector again and again and that is going to have much more on crunch on this bank balance sheets and thereby government is going to come into this play and they started to give loans or some other funding to the banks and thereby liquidating this companies so this is nothing but it is making a government tax money to go into the banks so it is nothing but leaving the bank loan, farm loan 
and this corporate NPS is both are one and the same. And the recent scenario with respect to the farm loans is there was huge increase in this large loans in the agriculture sector, especially at the period of a March month. That is a March rush. That shows this the amount that has been utilized by this farm loan is not properly utilized for this agriculture purpose. Rather than it was utilized for the other purpose because at the March period it will be harvesting one day. There was no sowing period. But most of our the bank loans for this agriculture sector is putting on this March period only. That is February March period only. There was a huge rush for this loans uh, weaving. So this there was a huge increase in this uh, large scale loans in the agriculture since 1990. And another with respect to comparing this corporate NPS, the top 12 corporate companies in India accounts for 25 percentage of NPS. And the four companies that recently we have resolved that will lead to have only 52 percentage of recovery. That is 48 percentage of the loan amount that we have given to that four companies has been put it into a loss. And this interest rate of the corporate loans is very low. That shows this farm loan is very higher amount while this corporate loans are giving at a very low amount and the recovery is also very low. That shows this corporate NPAs are burdening the bank sheets more than this farm loan waving. And apart from this, the OECD, that Organization of Economic Cooperation and Development has said that this average revenue loss by this Indian farmers from between the 2014 and 2016 due to this export uh, restriction is 1.65 trillion rupees. That shows the more farmers, how the farmers are great stressed. That stress has started to lead to this farm need for this bank loan, farm loan waving. So we need to focus on how the farmers can generate more revenue. So we have to focus on what are the stresses that the farmers has been facing. The first and foremost stress is this export restriction. Each and every time when government started to put export restriction, the farmers will be at the stake with of risk of how to invest in this future. That is what commodity they wanted to cultivate in the next having, uh, sowing season. So that is the this export, export restriction makes the farmers to be at a peril. And next important thing is this price of agriculture price. So government started to handle this agriculture product price. To handle it in the low values, they started to give subsidies. But most of the subsidies are going to the middlemen only. Not the farmers are going to reach the full amount of benefits of the subsidy. So in order to contain this low price of agriculture product, to benefit the consumers as well as to benefit the farmers, we have to eliminate, the government has to eliminate the role of middlemen in the agriculture. So more and more technology has to be introduced. So like ENOM, that is National Agriculture Market through the online and so much of uh, APMCs has to be made into online. Thereby we can make the elimination of this middleman. And third important thing is this Swami Northern report of 2006 has said that India's food security cannot achieve through this import of food products. So we have to develop own generation of this, our food culture. That is this, we have to generate our own needs uh, food products. Because if we started to import pulses, then it will threaten the food security of India. So our country has more and more of agriculture land and more people are involving in agriculture. So what are the food needs of the Indian people has to be satisfied by the Indian agriculture farmers. So that by only we can satisfy the food security of India. And apart from this, the farmers are lose their periodical, their personal assets if they fall into a defaulting. While this corporate NPA's business people are not losing their personal assets that much easily like the farmers. That shows there was a difference between this handling this farmers loan weaving as well as this corporate NPA's. With that we will end up today's current question. Thank you. Have a nice day. Comment and share on this channel.